Hey guys, it's Belle, and in this video, I'm going to be reading through and translating for you this fascinating little text in Old Saxon, and this is the Confessio. Now, what this is, for those of you who are not um, of a Catholic or Orthodox persuasion, is the practice of confessing one's sins to a priest. And this text itself, which you can see in its original manuscript here, is kind of a curious one. I've not seen anything quite like it in early medieval England. What I have seen are texts which are very similar, which are called penitentials. Now, penitentials are for the use of a priest. So the priest says, um, if so-and-so has done so-and-so sins, they must do so-and-so penance. That's a list that priests were using since, I believe, around the 7th or 8th century in Ireland onwards, and they became quite common. But they weren't for the ordinary people to use, and they were, for the most part, written in Latin, and some, such as the Canons of Theodore, were later translated into English. But this text is very curious, because as we'll see when we read through it, it seems to be a text for the penitent themselves to say. Most of the sentences start with ik, and we can see here, which is I, ik yuhu, I, I confess or I swear, and then it gives a list of sins that, that this person has done. And there's a lot going on here. Obviously, this is too long a list, because this list is comprehensive. It goes through all of the different kinds of sins a person could do. Um, it's very implausible this <laughs> person who's going to say this, or the person who wrote this has done all of these sins. What I suspect this is, is that this might have been a thing that the priest was supposed to read aloud to the penitent. And the penitent would maybe give some kind of verbal assent. So when they would say, um, ik yuhu bisprakios, I sort of confess to rumour spreading, basically. But then the priest did that. If the come penitent was guilty of that, the penitent might raise their hand and say, yes, ik yuhu, like I did this kind of thing. And if they didn't, then they would keep silent. Because, remember, we're talking about Saxony in the Carolingian era, so we're talking uh, 700s, 800s, um, the people who are speaking Old Saxon and not reading Latin for the most part are going to be illiterate. So it's less likely that the um, scribes who, oh sorry, that the people who are confessing their sins are going to be able to read the Old Saxon that's on the page. The Old Saxon that's on the page is for the benefit of the clergy. And the clergy themselves are mostly literate in Latin and many of them have been trained either trained by scribes from early medieval England or are themselves from early medieval England. So they're using old English spelling conventions to some extent in writing Old Saxon. And they're just sort of approximating the language that they see, or they hear rather, among the Old Saxon laity, the Old Saxon speaking laity. If you want to go to a YouTube channel that's really good to get more information about the specific linguistics of Old Saxon and how it's written on the page, I would highly recommend Scott Shell's YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. And I should probably do that for all of my videos reading through the Old Saxon texts. So that's how I think this text was meant to work. The priest would read this aloud to the penitent, and that's why it's written in Old Saxon. It's because if it's written in Latin, the priest has to do a bit of translating on the spot, and that might be a bit more difficult. And also, it means, um, it could have meant, I should say, that whoever translated it had oversight over the process. So something like a word like misplakias, swearianas, all of these things could potentially have slightly different meanings in what the original Latin word is, in the various penitentials which these sins have probably been taken from. The Old Saxon word on the page might have a slightly different meaning, and giving a priest an Old Saxon version to use in their pastoral work rather than a Latin version ensures that the meaning is what an authoritative source, i.e. the translator, wants to communicate rather than something that the priest 
stumbles into out of error, let's say. So that's how I think this text works. We should read it aloud, and the penitent would say, yes, I confess to these sins, but not to those sins. Uh, curiously enough, it doesn't really go too much into anything like penitence or what one should do. This is just the confession part of, well, saying confession. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's get into this fascinating text, which I believe is the longest prose test that we have attested in the Old Saxon language. So, as usual, I'll read it out and then I will translate it for you. And with the Old Saxon, you know, I'm worse at pronouncing Old Saxon than even Old English, so do forgive my poor pronunciation. So, Ik juhu goda alla machtigon fadar en di alon sinon helagon wichethon, en di fi godes mane, allerdo mineral sundiono, Derra de ik je vachta, en die is vak, en die je deda. Van die die ik ervist sundia werkian begonsta. Ok juhu ik, so wat so ik thes je deda, thes wichthar minera christin hedi wari. En die wichthar minamo gelover wari. En die wichthar minamo begichton wari. En die wichthar minamo mestra wari. En die wichthar minamo herdoma wari. En die wichthar minera rechta wari. Ik juhu nithas en die aunstes hetias en die besprakias, swerianias en die liaganias, firvin lustono en die minero jetido farratendo, of armorias en die tragi godes anbachtas, horwiliono mans lachtono, of ratas en die overdrankas, en die ok und hidion mos fechoda en die drank. Ok juhu ek dat ek juhit mos en die drank nithar god, and the minas herdom as raka, so nu ye held, so excolda, and the mer terrida than excoldi. Right. So, one thing you can probably identify straight away um, is how repetitive this thing is. Like I said, it really is a long list of all the sins that a person could plausibly do. I've got one, two, three, four, five endies, ands in a single sentence. So, it can get a bit repetitive, but let's get into what it means. So, the first words, ik juhu, I confess, goda alla macht gon father, that's in the dative, so it's like to, to God, the Almighty Father, endi, alon sinon helagon o wihethon, and now this is another dative, but I think it means more like on the holy relics rather than to the holy relics, because you don't confess your sins to relics. It's more of a surety of the sincerity of what this person is saying. So I swear to God Almighty Father on all the holy relics, and fi God is money. And to you, O man of God. I do find it a bit curious here that it's saying to a man of God rather than some word like what might be a cognate of Gudian Gothic, or just some word to mean a priest. We don't really have that here. It just says God's man, which is so curious indication of how uh, vernacular old Saxon religion was handling the role of a priest. And then, what does he confess? Allerdo minerdo sundiono, all of my sins. Thero, of these which, the ik ithachta, those which I thought, which is actually quite an interesting deviance from present-day Catholic uh, catechism in that Catholic catechism in the present day normally does not consider um, many thoughts in and of themselves to be sinful. It's the actions one takes upon them which would be sinful. So it's a curious thing that this text is describing thought itself as liter literal thought crimes, or thought sins, I should say. So he's confessing the sins that he thought, and he sprak, and he said, and he did, and that I did. Von theu the ik erest sundia werkian begonsta. From the time in which I first began to work since, and I do apologise for the banging in the background, I can't do anything about it. Ok juhu ik so hot so ik thes jideda. And I swear, um, and I, or I confess rather to, so hot so ik thes jideda. Whatever I did of that which thes thes. So I confess whatever I did which was, with a minera Christian heady, which was against my Christianhood or Christhood. 
with that minimal yilovon against my um, belief or my faith, with that minimal biyithon, which is against my understanding, which is a curious one, with that minimal mestra against my master, and that's almost certainly a Latin loan word from magister, so it's referring to a teacher's sort of relationship. And the fact that they've got this in here suggests that they are anticipating the possibility of this confession being used by a wide variety of people because the laity are not going to have mestra. They might have some kind of person who teaches them certain things, but they're not going to formally have a magister uh, as somebody in a cathedral school or just a secular clergy or um, a monk might have. So the fact that this is in here suggests that a clerical audience could have been intended at least in part for this text, and it could also have been used by a broader audience. Uh, I think we need to think about texts in the Middle Ages in general as not having exclusive audiences or functions, in large part because a lot of the texts that survived to the present day may well have survived because they were suitable for a wide variety of audiences, not just a single one. And texts which were suited only for a limited audience may well have just not been copied and not been preserved because a limited audience might soon dry out, you know? So it's something to bear in mind. So he's confessing to everything he did against his Christianhood, against his faith, against his understanding, against his master, against his herdoma, against my my ruler, basically. Again, this might indicate that this would be the kind of line that a noble might confess to as opposed to a, a monk or a priest might confess to the former. And he with min morechta wari, and was against my right. Now, this word is curious and interesting, rechta. Because the word recht um, in these, like in Old Saxon, also the Germanic languages in general, cognates of it in Gothic like rechts and um, Old English uh, recht. They tend to correspond or gloss the Latin word jus, which is sort of it's a complicated word, it's hard to explain, but it sort of means law, entitlement, it means both of those things, it's like law, entitlement, but it also brings with it this understanding of responsibility, like a jus is something that not just the individual, but society must adhere to. So this line, with our minimum recta, it's not quite what we would normally think of in the sense of like, I have rights, like I have the right to do this. A medieval person would regard that as you have, as, as saying that we have a license to do this. Whereas this is saying, when it goes against my right, it's going against what I specifically am expected to do by my society. That's sort of what it means by without a minimum recta. So in this first paragraph, we've got all of the sins that this guy's confessing. He's going to confess everything that was against his Christianhood against his faith, against his understanding, against his master, against his secular lord, and against his responsibilities. And now we get into some of the actual sins that he's confessing. So, ik juhu nithas endi aumstes hetias endi bisprakias swerianas. Let's um, do those first. <laughs> so, um, goodness. Nithas endi aumstes are hatred and envy. Then we have hetias and libisprachias, um, enmity and slandering. Hetias, we can see the connection with the English word hate. Bisprachias, like by speaking, you know, slandering. And then swearianas is sort of evil desires or swearings, basically. And the liaganias and lies, we can again see the connection with liaganias and lies in English. Firin lustono, um, sinful desires, that obviously lusts being that. I have a, yeah, firin where, firin sort of means like disastrous or shameful, essentially, as a prefix in Old Saxon. So shameful desires, and the minero yet hidio faralatanero, which is kind of cute. So minero, so yet hid is like a sort of time or an hour, Farlatanero is like the ones that have been left behind. So it's literally um, 
the times that I didn't go to prayer when I should have. So this guy has been a bit late in his prayers, which is kind of cute. Um, over modias, arrogance, which is I think is a cool word for arrogance, like over mindness. Um, Endi dragi godes andabachtas, and of laziness in God's service. Horawiliono, of Again, this I'm translating this like lascivious wishes, or like slutty desires. So will you know being desires and whore being the sort of prefix, meaning sort of sexual, like the modern English word whore or prostitute. Manslachtono, manslaughters. Very dramatic list you've got here. Over atas, overeating, and the over drunkas, over drinking, and the ok untilion mos fechoda. And also that I consumed, fechoda, mos, which is an old Saxon word for food, untilion, at an inappropriate time, and he drunk. So I consumed food and drink at an inappropriate time. So it's not just overeating and overdrinking, it's doing these things at the wrong time. Ok yuhu ik, and I swear, that ik yuwichid mos, and I swear that I blessed um, the food, and the drunk, and the drink, neither got, sort of I don't know how to describe this. It's like beyond that which is good or away from that which is good or away from God. Endi minas herdomes raka. And the business of my Lord, so ne ye held, I did not maintain or tend to. So excalda, as I should have. Endi mer terida, and I did more, fun ik. Scaldi than I should have, or I consumed more than I should have. So, that's the first part of this list of sins. It's quite a long one. Bear with me. Let's go over the quick point to bear in mind is this curious little thing which we see in the um, early continental Germanic languages in their orthography. Is this curious kind of letter with the O and the U on top. If we go back to the manuscript, I think you can probably find a couple of examples where they've written it on the page with the U above the O. It's not necessarily ubiquitous. They don't actually do it everywhere. Um, so the places where they do is interesting. And part of the reason why is because, as Scott Shell says on his YouTube channel, Old Saxon as a language was meant for a pretty broad Sprachbund. So it was meant to be intelligible over a large area where the precise vowels that people were using in a lot of these words were different and a lot of these vowels were pronounced as schwas rather than, you know, um, as schwas rather than as proper vowels in and of their own right. I can't actually see any of the um, O and U vowels on this particular page, but if you point one out, um, let me know in the comment section. Let's go on. So these get on more to relations with other people in society, which is pretty interesting, actually. It's sort of, like I said earlier, they're not giving you penitences, but they're certainly laying out here a list of responsibilities that a person may have failed to do so. This earlier part, which is not a division that's in the manuscript, by the way, this is just for my own sake so that I can fit it all onto a page and have it be a reasonable size font. But this first part I split off here because... These are about the crimes that a person has done, like active things that a person has done. And this part of the text is about sins that a person has done by omission, so not doing enough. So what have they not done? Ik yu yuhu, that ik minan father and the mother so ne erda, and the so ne miniota so excolda. And the ok mina brother, and the mina swester, and the mina other nachiston, and the mina friund, so ne erda, and the so ne minioda, so excolda. Ves yuhu ik plutardico, that ik arma man, and the otra eliendia, so ne erda, and the so ne minioda, so excolda. Ves yuhu ik, that ik mina jungeron, and the mina filulos, so ne lerda, so excolda. Then na hergon sunundag. And the Heragun Missa, ne Firioda, and the Neerda so excolda. Usas trocht in a lichamon, and the is blood mid sulicardu porctu, and the mid sulicardu miniu, ne antpeng so excolda. Sia coro, ne visoda, and the 
im ihre Nordur wie ne gaf, so ich skolda. Serda en die unfrache ne trosta, so ich skolda. Minan degmon, so recht ne gab, so ich skolda. Gasti so ne anfäng, so ich skolda. Ok juhu ich, dat ich fia je war, de ich je werda ne skolda, en die fia ni je sonda, de ich je sonnan skolda. So, what does all of this mean? Ich ju juhu dat ich minan fader en die morda so ne erda en die so ne minioda so ich skolda. I swear to you, this is to the man of God that we talked about earlier, that ich minan fader en die morda so ne erda, that I did not honor my father and mother. So this is drawing from the Ten Commandments, obviously. And die so ne minioda so ich skolda, and I did not um, love them as I should have. And the ok mina brother and the mina swesta, and also my brother and my sister, and the mina odra nachiston, and my other neighbor, uh, and the mina friund and my friend, so ne erda, and the so ne minioda, so excolda. I did not honor them and I did not love them as I should have done, which I think we're all guilty of at least from time to time. Fes yuhu ek lutarliko. Um, I confess this cleanly, flutarliko, that ik arma man in the other elienda so ne erada, that I did not honor the poor man and other like beggars or the other foreign men so ne erada, and he so ne miniora so excolda, and I did not love them as I should. So we've got this formula here ne erada and he so ne miniora so excolda. This repeats itself a few times. Thes juhu ik, dat ik mina jungeron en die mina filulos so ne lerda so ik skolda. I, I confess to this, that I um, did not lerda, I did not teach mina jungeron, my youngers, en die mina filulos, and my, now this is interesting, my children uh, so ik skolda. Now this word filulos, it's very obviously coming from the Latin filulus, meaning like a little son, like a, an affectionate term for a child. And I think the fact that it's coming from a Latin loanword suggests that this is probably the part that would have been said by maybe even one of the teachers, by, by the mestra um, that we saw in the first section of this text, um, saying, my sin as a monk, say, was that I didn't teach my subordinates that children below me in a monastery as well as I should have done. So, then a helagon sunundag and the fia helagon missa ne firiada. So, I did not celebrate the Holy Sunday, then a helagon sunundag, and the Holy Mass, fia helagon missa, and in erda so excalda, and I did not honor them as I should have. Usas drochtinas lichamon. A Lord's body, and he is blood mit sulicardu for blot mit sulicardu forctu, and his blood, which with such fear, which is kind of interesting, with with appropriate fear, and he mit sulicardu minu, and with appropriate, I'm trying to think of the word for this love, ne antfeng so excalda. So I did not receive the Lord's body and his blood with the appropriate fear and with the appropriate love. So it's this really curious notion that taking sorry, taking communion, which of course one has to be confessed and in a relative state of grace in order to do so. So this person might have been doing it before they go to communion. Um, this is implying that for the old Saxons, they viewed the Eucharist as this frightening act, at least in part, and that fear was a good thing. You were supposed to have this fear of taking the Lord into you, which is fascinating and a curious insight into their theology. Siakoro ne wisada. I did not, like, visit the sick. And the im ira nodorfinegav. And I did not give for their need so excolda as I should have. Serda en die unfrache ne trosta, so ik skolda. I did not, like, trust the sad and unhappy men as I should have. Minan degmon, so recht negaf, so ik skolda. 
Now, this is an, another interesting loan with Degamon. It's clearly from the Latin decimum, which is like a tithe. So these are tithes to the church, not to a secular lord. So I did not give my tithes as I should do. Gasti so ne antfeng so ex golda. I did also did not receive guests as I should, because in this time period, if um, a traveller came, particularly pilgrims, one was supposed to accept them into their home and give them shelter. Ok, yuhuik at ik thia yuard, the ik yuerdan ne skolda. And I confess that I was, what's the word I'm trying to think of? I separated these things that I should not have separated, the ik guerdan ne skolda. And the thia ne yisonda, the ik yisonan skolda. And I did not reconcile things which I should have reconciled. So there we go. These are a huge long list of some of the responsibilities that people were expected to have in Old Saxony. And now we have we go back to confessing some more actions, some more sins. So let's get on with this. Ik juhu un rechtaro jesichtio, un rechtaro je horithano, en die un rechtaro je thankono, un rechtaro wordo, un rechtaro werko, un rechtaro sechtlo, un rechtaro stadlo, un rechtaro gango, un rechtaro legaro, un rechtas kustianias, un rechtas helsianias, un rechtas anafangas, ik je horda. Hedinusia endi un renia sespilon. Ik jelofda fes ik jelovian in iskolda. Ik stal, ik varstalan fechoda, an orlof gaf, an orlof anfeng, meneth swarda an wihethon. A volgan het endi jestridi an mihada, endi mistumft endi aunst, ik sundioda an lugiomo je witschipia, endi an flokana. Mina ye tidi and the min ye bet, so ni ye helt, so and the so ni fulda, so ex scolda. Un recto las, un recto sang, un ye horsam was, mers brak and the mers wigoda than ex goldi, and the mixelvon mid willon wardon and the mid willon wercon, and mid willon ye thankon, mid willon luston, mer un surda than ex goldi. So, goodness, and it's all that this mean. Ik juhu un rechtaro jesichtio. I confess, obviously, ik juhu un rechtaro jesichtio to unjust sightings. And bear in mind this adjective here, un rechts, it sort of relates back to that line that we had right at the beginning there that was against my right, that recht, uh, with our mineral rechta, is the same stem and it's basically against one's social responsibilities, one's responsibilities to the community. So, I confess to unjust sightings, which is quite interesting, this idea that, like, the gaze potentially being a cause of sin, or, or, or a sin in itself, if incorrectly applied. Un rechtaro ye horithano, of unjust hearings, un rechtaro ye thankono, unjust thoughts, un rechtaro wardo, unjust words, un rechtaro werko, um, unjust deeds or works, Un rechtaro setlo, unjust sittings, uh, un rechtaro stadlo, unjust standings, un rechtaro gango, un, unjust walkings, un rechtaro legaro, unjust laying down, un rechtas kusianas, unjust kissing, un rechtas helsianias, unjust embracings, un rechtas anf anafangas, unjust Huggings. Now, curiously, just the other day I was reading um, Alfred of Rivo's 12th century treatise on uh, De Amicizia, de f on friendship. And he's got a chapter specifically on like a good kiss versus a bad kiss because it's almost like he was seeking to answer the um, queer theologians who would come about in later centuries uh, who would say stuff like, oh, well, Jesus kisses his. Um, disciples so isn't it cool to kiss like other dudes etc and uh, i mean i think it is cool to kiss other dudes but from a, from a like christian perspective particularly or like a catholic i should say perspective particularly the catholicism of this time period um 
the response which somebody like Alad of Rivo would give is that a kiss can be unrecht, it can be against what is right if it is done with the intention that leads to sin or with sinful thoughts. And we will see down below that the feelings or the motivations behind a person's actions can be a cause for sin, even if, curiously, um, the action itself may not intrinsically be um, a bad thing. And that, I think, is what defines these unright kissings, um, is the motivation behind them being less than pure. So if you want to learn more about the distinction between like a just and an unjust kiss for a right and an, a non-right kiss, I would recommend uh, Ara de Revo's treatise De Amicizia. So, ek yehorda hede nusia endi unrenia sesfilon. This is really cool. So I listened to ek yehorda hede nusia. I listened to heathenness and uh, unrenia sesfilon and unclean or unholy dirges, like funeral songs. So this is quite interesting because, I mean, m most of the old Saxon texts that we have are written only, well, maybe even within the first or second generation of Christianity. So heathenry, like Germanic paganism, is still around and still a very plausible threat and counter to Christianity in terms of religious practice in this time period. So this person in the confession saying, I listen to heathenness, suggests that at the time that this text was being written down in the ninth century, heathenness was still pottering around the Saxony region. Ik yelovda thes ik yelovian ne skolda. This is very interesting. I believed in that which I should not have believed in. So, I mean, literally having the wrong belief, having the wrong faith is a kind of moral failing on the part of the person. And then we have a bunch of more obvious sins. Ikstal, I stole, ik farstal an fechoda. I consumed, sto I, or I took stolen goods. On orlov gaf, which is I gave things without permission. On orlov antfeng, and I received things without permission. Meneth swore an weathon. This is fascinating. I swore perjury upon the relics, because of course the relics of the saints, which they referenced earlier, we have on, um, were a very important means in which people in the Middle Ages demonstrated their faith. You know, how do you know that somebody's going to keep their word? Well, if they swear on the relics and risk their eternal soul, they're probably not going to do that for nothing. So, a bolgan het and the yestridi on me hara. I had a bolgan head, which is violent temper and the yestridi and quarrelsomeness on me, upon myself, and the mistumft, which is, I just find this to be a funny word, uh, but what it actually means, mistumft, <laughs> is discord and the aunst is envy. Ik sundioda an logiomo yewitskipia. I. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word for this, for sundi yoda. I separated things, an lugiomo yuwitskipia, based on false testimony. So this might have been, I separated from a from my, a wife, based on false testimony. And the an flokana, and based on cursings. Now, this might refer to cursing in the sense of like, slandering somebody's reputation, or it could refer to, um, the result of witchcraft, somebody casts a spell, uses cursed tablets to make somebody leave their spouse, as is a very common request in cursed tablets. And if the person ends up leaving their partner, even if it's as a result of this, perhaps it was felt in the time period that they ought to confess to that as a sin. Mina ye tidi endi min ye bed, so ne ye helt. So I did not keep ne ye helt. My yatidi, the times, appropriate times for giving prayers, and the minyabet, and my prayers. And the saw ni yafulda, and I did not fulfill them, so excalda, as I should have. Un recto las, I 
gathered uh, unrighteously. Un recto sung, I sang unrightly. Un horsam was, I was unobedient. Mer sprak, and in mer swigoda than excaldi, I spoke more and I kept silent more than I should. Endi mek selvon mid wilon wardon, uh, endi mid wilon werkon, endi mid wilon yethankton, mid wilon luston, mer unsurda da than excaldi. So let's go with mek selvon and then go all the way to the bottom. So mek selvon myself un surdada I soiled, I defiled myself. Um, mid wilon wardon with vile words, and mid wilon werkon and with vile deeds. Now this uh, construction, uh, mid wardon and mid werkon, or with, you know, with words and deeds. This is a phrase which appears in poetry of. All the early medieval Germanic languages for which we have poetry. It occurs in Old Saxon, also in the Heliand. It occurs in Old English in Beowulf, etc., etc. Um, words and works is quite a common phrase for them. And fascinatingly enough, it even appears in the Gothic language in one part of the Scythians, which is one of the things which suggests that the Scythians is not a perfect word for word translation of the original Greek commentary on the Gospel of John by Theodore or Heraclea, because if it were so, this would be unlikely to be the case, because we don't see um, mid wardam yach uh, warstwam in the Gothic Bible, which is, for the most part, a word for a direct translation from the Greek. So this phrase gives us an indication that this text is communicating its meaning in very... I guess, idiomatic ways. This is idiomatic Old Saxon. It's pretty Germanic. They're not doing it directly from the Latin. It's not a very crude translation, let's say. So, he soiled himself with vile words, vile works, vile thoughts, and with vile lusts. More than excaldi. Mer than excaldi. More than I should. So, we've got a lot more sins up here that... Um, this person has done, and we have learned that the um, thought processes behind one's actions are very important for determining whether a thing is sinful or not. So, whew, last bit. Let's get on with this. And this section um, covers, to a greater extent, how the individual relates to broader society than just their immediate family, to the social order of things, let's say. So, ik juhu that ik an kirikun un rechta stachta, en i otra merda therdu helagon letzion. Biskopos en di prestras ne erda en di ne minoda so excalda. Ik juhu thes alas te ik nu benemnid heviu, en di benemion ne mag. So ik et witandi dadi so unwithandi. So mid yelovon so mid un yelovon. So what so ik thes yedeva thes withargodas willion wardi. So wakondi so slapandi. So andag so anachta. So an huilikarutidi so it wari. So gangrek es alas en thes alamachtigon godas mundburt endi ansina yenachta. Endi nu don ik es alas lutarlikio minan begiston. Goda alamachtigon fadar, endi alon sinon helagon. Endi thi godas mana. Gerno an godas willion te jibotiana, endi thi bidiu jiberas, that thu mi te goda jithingi jwesan willias, that ik min lif endi minan jelovon an godas hudion jendion moti. Huh. Quite long. But what does it say? Ik juhu that, I, I confess that, ik an kirkun un rechtas thachta, I thought unright thoughts in church, which I find really cute, like he was in church, he wasn't paying attention, he thought some bad things, and now he's got to confess it. And the odra merda thervu heragon lezion. And I contemplated, or I disturbed other things, thervu helagun lezion maybe during the holy readings or besides the holy readings. And again, this lection from the Latin, lectio, is a loan word. It's not sort of 
constructed from Neil Saxon itself, showing this concept of a um, reading is comparatively foreign to the Old Saxons, but also it's not just any reading, it's specifically the holy reading, the Lectio Divina, which would happen during a church service. This word appears to have been borrowed into the Gothic language as well, because we see in the Verona glosses as an example, the word Lectio, spelled L-A-I-K-T-J-O, which is Gothic orthography, but which reproduces perfectly the sound of the Latin word Lectio, as it was pronounced in the time period. So this has been treated as a loan word into Gothic, even though there are um, other words such as anakunins, for instance, which could have been used to communicate the sense of reading a text aloud, or songs, as an example, in Gothic. So the fact that they're bringing it in suggests that this is specifically a form of holy reading that we have going on here. So during the holy reading, the penitent here made some disturbances. Biscopos en di presros ne erda Endi ne minoda so excolda. So I did not erda and minoda honor and love uh, the biscopos and the presos, the bishops and priests, so excolda. Ik juhu thes alas the ik nu benemnid hebiu. I confess to all of this that I have now benemnid, I've now named, and the benemnion ne mag, and that I cannot name, which might refer to some kind of sins that are too shameful for the person to list, although given how many sins there are there, it's really confusing as to what sins may not be listed, perhaps more specific kinds of sexual immorality than the kinds that they have described here. So, ik et witandi dadi so unwitandi, whether I did it knowingly or unknowingly, because this is a curious thing when it comes to something such as sexual mores. Um, Monastic rules from this time period, actually many of them, such as the rule of Leander, suggest that um, monks must confess if they have a nocturnal emission, despite this being obviously an involuntary and an unknowing um, occurrence in the body, because that is still itself a form of sin. And Leander's, it's really hard, Leander's monastic rule, his, I think, common monastic rule is what it's called, um, that was followed by uh, monks in, I believe, 8th century or 7th century Visigothic Spain, I think 7th century. And he basically says that the only reason you would have a nocturnal emission is if you had unpure thoughts, you lewd creature, so you must go and confess your sins. It's kind of harsh, man. I feel terrible for that poor guy who was just like having a nocturnal emission and then it's like, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> God, the days of sexual repression, eh? Anyway, so mid ye love on, so mid un ye love on. Um, whether I did these things with faith or with with unfaith, so, so not believing, which is which might refer to atheism or it might refer to the state of heathenry, but what this means is I confess to what I did, whether I was aware of it or not, witandi or unwitandi, and also whether this person believed in Christ at the time or did not believe in Christ at the time. So what so ik thes yededa thes wither godes willion wari? Whatever I did that was against God's will, so wakondi so slapondi, whether waking or sleeping, so on dark so on nachta, whether by day or by night, so on huilukarditidi, so it wari, or at any time, whichever time that it took place. So gangu ik is alas an thes alomachtigon godas mundburt. So so I go um, from all of this uh, onto the mundbord sort of means, I'm trying to remember what it is now, into the protection, basically. Thessalo machtigon godas of this almighty God. And the an sina yenatha, and into his mercy. And inu don ik is alas lutardiko. And now I do uh, all of this Lutarlikio more cleanly, minan beeton, um, in my understanding, Goda alamachtigon fadar, for God the Almighty Father, and the alon sinan helagon, and for all of his saints, and the thee, God is mana. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to do better now, um, thanks to my understanding, uh, through God the Almighty Father, and all of his saints, and through you, God man. So I they're going to, like, do better with the help of all of these people. 
Yerno and Godas William te Yebotiana. So eagerly in God's will, te Yebotiana is like to improve, basically. Um and or to command even. And if you bath you yebedas and I beseech your prayers, or I beseech you for prayers. This is referring to the priest whom the penitent is confessing to. That fool me te goda yathingi wesan wilias, that you will um, be, I guess, sup an intercession to God for me, uh, using me in the dative here. Um, the con- the construction here is a bit weird. That you, uh, wilias wesan, that you will be um, yathingi, um, I guess, in an intercession, uh, te goda to God me for me. That ik min leaf, so that I min leaf endi min an yelovon, my life and my belief on Godas huldion, within God's protection, yenion morti, so that I may end my life and my, I guess, my belief in God's protection or under God's protection. So this might have been because the confession could have had to be said before last rites and also because. If a person dies without having confessed, still being um, not in a state of grace, their soul is in great mortal peril. So that is why the line at the end here talks about ending the penitent's life within God's good graces, which is what the point of this text is, to bring this person back into God's good graces. So I hope you enjoyed um, reading through this Old Saxon confession with me. Um it's a really interesting piece, the longest bit of prose I think that we have in Old Saxon, and it's cool just to get a little bit of insight into the kinds of sins and how they thought about theology in the time period. So, if you want me to teach you Old Saxon or any of the other languages that I teach on this channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon, which will be linked in the description of this video, where you can get private tuition from me. You can also join my Discord server, where we have loads of conversations about linguistics and history and other fun things. And it's also just a fun community of like-minded people. We get together, we share memes, we sometimes do movie nights. If you come join us, it's a good time. So until next time, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you had a nice day. Bye everyone!